Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lee Chantel. I'm going to start now. Um, thank you for coming. I'm speaking today about international activism and engaging abroad. Um, who here is from the area? Quite a few. Whereabouts are you guys from? London. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? Devon. Devon, okay. Just found out where Devon was. <laughs> what about France? France, okay, cool. So I'm from Australia. It's my first time I've been here, so thanks for having me. And um, today I just wanted to go over um, a few things I've learned on my travels. I do a lot of travels and uh, have a lot of adventures, so I just wanted to talk a, a bit about that today. And um, hopefully we might have some time for some questions at the end too, so if you have anything, um, leave it till then, that'd be great. So. Um, my name is Lee Chantel. I run a website called vivalavegan.net. I've been running that since 2005, and um, it's been a place for a lot of lifestyle and activism, anything to do with veganism. And um, that started with some recipe calendars that I released just after I finished studying naturopathy and nutrition um, over a decade ago. And it grew back. In 2005, there really wasn't any vegan lifestyle websites. So there was a lot of animal liberation, a lot of the vegan or the vegetarian societies in each of our states in Australia, they had websites. But there wasn't anything to do with things that I like, like makeup and um, some activism and um, intersectionality aspects as well. So that's what, that's what my, web, my website did. And um, yeah, that's been going for quite a while. Um, now it's more of an archive place because I had over a decade's worth of information. I really just don't have time to keep up with it anymore. Um, but there's lots of articles and interviews and recipes and blogs and how-to videos and um, yeah, lots of stuff on there that you can check out if you haven't seen it before. Um, so today I'm just going to talk about some of my travels and there's just so many places to visit, so many countries to check out, so many people to meet and um, if you're able to, um, travel is one of the most amazing things that you can do and um, I love I love travelling, I've travelled a lot and um, I'm able to do that because I have my, my own business and um, I do a lot of speaking so I'm a professional speaker and I go around and speak about a lot of different things mostly to do with marketing online, online um, social media, how to communicate more effectively online, online how to be nice to people and um, so that's what I do a lot of and I also just really don't like being in one spot for too long so um, I use that as to the best I can. And I know that I'm in a privileged position to travel, so not everyone's able to travel, um, but if you can, um, there's lots of ways you can do things that you don't have to pay a lot of money to travel either. Um, and I, most of my travels, I grew up um, in Papua New Guinea, so on a place called Bougainville Island, which is in the Solomon Islands of Papua New Guinea. So I spent the first 10 years of my life there. And um, oh, and I was even made in Africa, so I also have a little bit of the African influence there, I guess, as well. And um, lived in a, I've lived in Australia since. I've travelled a lot to the United States, to North America, and also to Southeast Asia a lot. And um, all of my trips, whether I've planned to or not, have involved promoting veganism and the vegan lifestyle and I just can't seem to get away from it, you know? And so I've been vegan for 20 years. I just celebrated my 20th anniversary in January. And um, for a lot of that time, I've been doing, I've been active in various ways, whether it's overseas or locally in Brisbane, where I live, which is in a state called Queensland. And um, I've been involved with a lot of events, so a lot of outreach, a lot of speaking, I've written quite a few books as well. I've put on a few festivals, um, I've been involved with a lot of not-for-profits and with my website of a decade's worth of stuff. And also um, I do a lot with engaging volunteers, so I've just become the president of the Vegetarian Vegan Society of Queensland, my home state, so, and one of my passions is involving and, and um, influencing and inspiring people to volunteer and be active and um, just you know allowing people to come up with things that they're passionate about and supporting them however they need. And 
And um, so, yeah, in Australia, I, I speak throughout um, Australia as well and have been doing that. We have all of our vegan events around World Vegan Day, which is the first of November, if you didn't know. And so we have a lot of our events around October and November, so that's getting into the summer then. Um, and so I, might, I just might talk about my travels to the US and um, haven't been to South America yet, that's on the list, but yeah, most of my travels have been to um, North America. And um, I never really planned to go to America because a lot of the stuff you hear about America is pretty crazy. So it um, wasn't really on my list of places to go to, but I was invited to speak at the Animal Rights Conference in 2010, which was held in Washington, D.C. And each year they take it in turns. One year it's in D.C., the next year it's in L.A. And it's a really good event to be involved in, actually. And when I went over there, um, what I did was people that I was friends with, um, that I knew had friends over there, I just contacted them and said, look, I'm coming over there, you know, let me know if there's anyone I should meet. And I also um, had a press release that I released about my travels and the places I was speaking and um, sent that to quite a few other speakers who were on the same bill as me and a couple of other, I can't remember the other speaking events because um, they don't they're not um, continued anymore, but there's a couple of others as well. So I went through and contacted all these people, and I do a lot of videos and interviews with inspiring vegans too. So I said, if you'd like to be interviewed with me, let me know. We'll, we'll catch up and make that happen. Okay. And you know, from something simple like that, um, some of those people that I, can, I contacted years ago, some of my closest friends now, and um, I know not everyone's as sociable or outgoing as me, but it, that's a really good thing and a really good tip that I'd suggest. Like if you're going somewhere new, to reach out to people that live in those areas and to connect with other people like-minded. And you never know, just you know, like I said, you know, if there's anyone that could be good to be in contact with, let me know, I'd love to meet them. And I like meeting new people too, it's always interesting. And so um, when I went there, I learned a lot about America and I think when you go to different places, you learn that it's not like what everyone else thinks it is, like what you see on TV and what you've heard from other people. And um, you know, that might not be the whole truth uh, or even some of the truth. And so it was really great for me to go to America and actually like the people there and like the place. And yeah, I've been back quite a few times as well. And when I travel, I like to go for at least three months into some place so that I can get to know the place well and not just go to the tourist spots and tick, tick things off on, on the passport. And some things, um, just be aware of what, what's happening in a country or what's happening with someone's culture before you go over there. When I went there, there was a lot of the global financial crisis effects that had happened and it was really quite eye-opening because in Australia we really weren't affected that much by it and it was really eye-opening to see people and a lot of my friends actually didn't have a job, they couldn't find a job for many, many years and um, some of these people were highly educated and just couldn't find jobs either in their area or any other sort of area and that's really heartbreaking to see. And um, if you think about these sort of things and how they affect people and how they can affect someone's activism or volunteering and things like that. So um, it, it was yeah, really hard to see a lot of people unemployed or underemployed. And um, I've done a lot of road trips through America, so a lot of the Midwest, and there's places that you would go where everything would just be boarded up, like there'd be heat, like on, even on the main streets of some places, there'd be boarded up places, and it was really depressing. There's lots of areas that were really depressing. And so the hard thing, in these sort of areas is how to how do we engage people that are really quite depressed or don't have much you know positivity going on in, the, in their life how do we engage them in other areas how do we get them to care about animals or veganism and um, it's it's really hard because a lot of people if you're speaking about animals or veganism they think you don't care about people and I know there's a lot of vegans that don't care about people I've got quite a few friends like that but 
there are a lot of people who do care about people as well as animals and it's really, um, I would encourage you to be really mindful and compassionate to people um, just in your daily life and especially when you travel overseas. And, um, you know, in America, I remember I was, I've, I've done about 30 of the states there now and um, I was trying to tell some of my friends at, um, well, one of the best conferences I ever spoke at was the vegan Vita Vegan Con, which is a vegan bloggers conference. It was really awesome and um, very well organized. One of my favorites, I went back there quite a few years. And um, I remember telling some of the other bloggers for the states I'd been to, and I was like, oh, the one that's next to that state, and they're all looking at me. They had no idea what state I was talking about. Literally no idea. And because I love maps and I'd seen it, I knew where it was. And um, they're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I had to look it up and just to tell them where it was. And um, I just couldn't get over that, you know. And I know there's a lot more states in America than there are in Australia, but um, I just didn't understand how a lot of people don't know the state next to where they live or the state near something or throughout their country. And um, because I do a lot online and um, acting online, and I, that's what I train people and teach people and speak about, um, they're really effective ways to engage with people and to communicate with people and to meet people. And um, from MySpace back in the day, um, Twitter, Google Plus, I love Google Plus, not many other people do, but I like it. Um, Facebook and even now Instagram, there's a lot of ways that you can connect with people. And um, these, these things, as much as I can't stand Facebook a lot of the time, they've really allowed me to connect with people and to get to know new people, and that, that's pretty awesome. And um, one of my friends, so when I came here actually, and my plan to come here, I wrote a blog about it, listed all the places I'm speaking and places I'm going, and I'm pretty much just going where my friends are and um, all friends of friends and um, things like that. So one of my friends, um, she just messaged me about going to Helsinki and um, she said, I've got a friend of a friend, love to meet you, you should go there. I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds pretty good. Um, then I looked at the um, weather and that doesn't sound very enjoyable for me because I prefer the um, warmer areas. And, um, and how I met her was when I was doing a road trip um, through Midwest America, we we're on our way to um, Boulder, Colorado, that's where she lived. And I said, oh, we're on our way to Colorado. And she's like, oh, come and stay with me. So, you know, that's how you make, make really awesome friends and, you know, be open to, to that sort of stuff as well. And I guess a lot of my stuff too is not, not planned too much. Like I always buy, you know, return tickets or, or plan the major sort of things, but from within that, so I have a lot of leeway and it's a lot of, you know, someone says, let's go for a road trip, I go, sure, I can fit it in. So that's how I like to travel. I know some people freak out about that, but you like that too? Right. Yeah, good. <laughs> and um, that, it's just, you know, you can just see where the wind takes you and it, it's much better, I think. Um, and so I think when you, when you travel, when you meet other people in other cultures, one of the one of the things um, to do is just realise that not everyone is on the same page as you, not everyone has the same experiences or um, has the same priorities as you and even has the, the great things that you do and um, you know one of the one of the places that one of my friends used to live um, in the States is called Troy, New York. So it's in upstate New York and I went to stay there with her for a while and um, it was really, um, it's a low socioeconomic area and there's um, like a bit of a food desert there. They don't have their own fruit and veg store. They got, you know, the, um, the bottle shops and the fast food stores because you know that's obviously essential but they don't have, you know, fruit and veg. And I just could not get over that because back home we got fruit and veg pretty much every everywhere, and it was really hard to to see that. And there was a great community, like my friends involved with a lot of feminism and bike culture, and there was you know a really cool community around those sort of things. And um, but they had to create their own community, and it's really hard to see. I'm not sure because I've only just arrived this week over here, but. Um, they, they didn't have good enough transport for people in that area to even go out of the area to get better food and to eat healthy, 
healthily. So there was people who, you know, you coming in and saying, hey, you should be vegan, you should eat more fruit and veg. There's just not really much of an opportunity for them. And they would have to work really, really hard to make that happen. And keep in mind, some of these people, if they had jobs, were working quite a few jobs as well. So just keep these sort of things in mind. Just because something works for you and has worked for you in the past doesn't mean it will work for other people. And yeah, just be compassionate and be mindful and just listen to people. You know, it's really easy when you go, especially as a Western person, going into another country and just saying, hey, this is how we do it, you should do the same. And um, that's really offensive, I think. And um, you should be learning the place that you're in, the culture, and learning from the people who are there. And um, <clears throat> so when I went to Southeast Asia, I just put on a couple of festivals in Brisbane, some big festivals, and I just wanted to chill out. So I was doing a six month trek in Southeast Asia, plan, you know, one country a month-ish, that was the sort of plan. And um, first week I get there, one of my friends introduced me to the general manager of the Indonesian Vegetarian Society. And she said, oh, hey, do you want to come and speak at all these events? We've got all these events coming up in the next three months. So I'm like, sure, will you pay for me to go there? Cool. Got somewhere for me to stay? Yep, okay, that's it. So three of those six months I was meant to be chilling out, were going around Indonesia and speaking to the local people. And Indonesia is probably my favourite country in the world, and I just love the people. And um, Ubud in Bali also is just like a, a bit of a spiritual haven or something. It's just a beautiful place. If you're lucky to get there, I strongly suggest it. And you know, it's very close to Australia too, so it's a bit easier and cheaper. And um, so. I did a lot of food demonstrations when I was there for the Indonesian Vegetarian Society and I did a lot of talks as well and they were mostly to Buddhist people and um, so I'd never spoken to just one type of religion before I guess because it's normally a bit of a mix whenever, whenever I went somewhere so that was a bit different to try and um, keep different things in mind as well when I was speaking to them and there was, I don't, I didn't understand why we had to have the talks at the Buddhist places all the time but that was who their target audience was and that's, you know, they could get the cheap spaces and um, so that was a bit hard for me to just be talking to one type of, of um, group of people and um, I realised, yeah, and a lot of Buddhists also um, are vegetarian, they don't eat animals. And, um, but they really didn't get why dairy was a problem, why eggs were a problem. If, if you're not sure, have, have a look at that. How many people are vegan here today, actually? Okay, so preaching to the common so I don't need to go into about the dairy and egg stuff, do I? Oh, they don't? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, so, and also, like, um, there's a large Muslim community in um, Indonesia as well, and a lot of those um, people revere cats, but they're absolutely petrified of dogs. So they really don't have any respect for dogs whatsoever. And there's a lot of issues with, you know, um, stray dogs or dogs being killed and eaten for, for their meat as well. So there's things like this where it's really, it's really hard to work out how to get people to um, connect with animals when they're being told by whoever they believe in that it, they're a less than animal or, and, and you know, that's a lot of religions, it's not, it's not just those religions, but that's a really hard thing to deal with and how do you break down those things, that's, I think that's a, a long held belief that's a really hard thing to do and especially for just you know our our lifetime and um, it's really important to get to know cultures and the language and um, customs in areas too you don't want to go into an area and you know be wearing their inappropriate clothes and you're showing your shoulders when you're not meant to or um, a bit too short a dress or something so you know do your research and one of the things I'd suggest is to learn some some um, phrases or even thank you and please, you know, just simple things 
that you can do that would mean a lot to someone when they're you know, giving you the food or um, they picked you up from the airport or dropping you off somewhere. Just simple things like that can really mean a lot to people. You know? You're taking the time to you know, connect with them on, on their level, that's awesome. And um, do your research. When you get somewhere, work out who's, who's doing the things that I like. Um, who, who's rescuing some animals, who's involved with food demos, who's got some activists on the ground doing stuff. Um, find out who does those things. And if you can't find anyone, you're probably not looking hard enough because there's a hell of a lot of people in the world that are doing awesome stuff everywhere you go. And um, just be careful when you go to certain things like um, when I went to Asia and some of the animal sanctuaries are really not sanctuaries like we would think. Um, the amount of research you do um, sometimes really doesn't help. You just have to get there and go, oh my god, that elephant is chained to a tree. And um, so just be aware of those sort of things. And um, it's really it's really heartbreaking to see how animals are treated in, in a lot of countries. And I went, um, I'll tell you a story. I was in Sumatra, which is one of the islands in Indonesia. And I was at this place called Bandar Lampung. And um, I went there. Everywhere said it was a sanctuary. I tried to do all this research online, and people there was live um, or wild Sumatra tigers. There was white rhinoceroses, which were only in that area, and there was elephants, and they were all meant to be just hanging out, you know, in the fields. And I went there with um, my hosts in that area, and the um, Sumatran tigers only come out at night. Didn't know that. Um, and then the rhinoceroses, they just had babies or something, so they're in like a little um, captivity area where you couldn't go to, I'm not sure what the correct term is for babies with that. Um, and then, so I'm like, okay, well at least we'll get to see the elephants. And the elephants, you could ride them, and um, they were just all tied up, and it was really horrible. And the people I was with who were vegan, people in that area just had no idea why it was so upsetting. They really didn't. And um, and then, um, so that was one side of Sumatra and I went to the next side the next day and it was a, just a horrible day. I had a pretty shitty day to be honest. And the next day it took me forever to get to this place called Bukut's Langwa. And I went there because there's this place that has semi-wild orangutans. <coughs> And I got there maybe four or something in the afternoon. It was quite a, quite a journey. And um, when I got there, they're like, "Oh, I don't think you're gonna see the orangutans. They're normally in, in bed by now or asleep, or they won't come to you." And so I said, "Oh, look, I'll just give it a go. But that's what I came here for. So let, let's try." And I had someone take me, and they're, they're semi-wild, so they have been rescued, and they'll feed them in certain areas, but you're not allowed to interact with them. They're just fed, and you can just watch them. And um, luckily for me, we had all these beautiful orangutans come, and they're just like hanging out on the tree, and we had, I think it was three, three mums and three babies, something like that, and they were just so gorgeous. It's gorgeous, like red sort of colour. Um, for, and it was beautiful to be around and I don't need to touch an animal to be, you know, to think they're amazing and and then um, I was able to get on a tyre tube and like go down the river um, and just washed everything away from the, from the last day so that was really awesome. I loved, loved, it was a good, um, good ending but a pretty shitty beginning. And, um, you know, every country has their own issues and they're all, you know, if you bring it back to the basic elements that it comes down to use and abuse of animals, which most people don't see the problem with, do they? So, um, you know, urbanisation destroys habitats and that can happen for koalas back in Australia, that happens all the time. The more and more people are trying to buy um, units in particular areas, the more and more land has to be cleared, the more and more koalas don't have their own habitat. So there's things that happen like this in, in other areas in the world too. And you know, there's a lot of animals that are deemed as pests that have to be shot, have to be shot. And so, you know, that happens to 
koalas in Australia, can happen to brumbies, can happen to foxes, can happen to so many different types of animals. And also um, the gambling industry, whether it's fighting or racing animals, there's a lot of, like in Indonesia, there's um, cock fighting and dog fighting. Even in Australia, there's dog fighting actually. And um, even greyhound racing. Do you have greyhound racing here? We do? Yeah. So um, that's a big thing at the moment in Australia because a lot of the MPs have gone to and fro with banning it. And, um, so sometimes we think we're getting there and then they, they go back on their work. Um, and live trade, do you have live animal trade to anywhere? So we have that live animal trade to the Middle East, like with um, the land. So, you know, there's things like that that exist all over the world and there's always issues in different, in different countries that all come down to the same thing, that people don't really have respect for animals um, and really just want to use them to how they need to make money and it all comes down to money most of it too doesn't it and like i said before there's awesome people doing stuff all around the world doing it every day and they don't need to post it on facebook about what they're doing every day they just get things done and these are the people that you should connect with and get to know and do things with when you're overseas and um i think that everyone can do the best that they can at any time. Whatever your passions are, whatever you're good at, that's what you need to focus on. And you know, there's a lot of mean people online and there's a lot of um, people that delight and just um, be negative. And I'm, I'm giving a talk about um, um, online etiquette and how to deal with um, online negativity this afternoon if you want to come to that. But um, there's, there's lots of people doing awesome stuff, so just remember that and try not to be judgmental. Sometimes it works, doesn't it? And um, so I just want you to be open when you go somewhere, even here, just in your regular life. Just be open to learn from others, because that's really important. And um, don't go somewhere if you travel and just expect that you're going to come over and save people from themselves or save them from whatever they're doing that's wrong and you're right. And that's, you know, that's the thing with veganism too. We don't want to be telling people we're right, you're wrong. We want to be saying, hey, what, what are you interested in? How can we have a conversation about things that are important to each other and see where you can plant seeds? And um, I think that, yeah, you should definitely get involved with local people and see what they're doing and work with them, not just tell them what to do. And um, volunteering is really awesome and um, has anyone here volunteered for like even if it's an event like this or for sanctuaries or anything? Yeah, that's awesome and I really encourage people to do some more volunteering and get whether it, do you have many sanctuaries over here? Yeah, and there's um, a variety of sanctuaries you can get involved with and whether and even just helping out online you can help post some um, videos or share some videos that people do and there's some really great stuff that you can do just from sitting in your chair and not necessarily going to these places or even going overseas you can still promote things that other people are doing when they're doing awesome things and um, I just think you know sometimes with the way the world is with the echo chamber of Facebook and all the other social media stuff we forget there's lots of different people out there if you only have friends that are like you yeah. um, you're only ever going to hear a certain thing you're only going to um, learn about those sort of things so um, I'd really like everyone to try and become friends with someone different or hang out with someone that's new and just expand your horizons a bit and um, that I think that's one of the ways forward for the world and just to see that we're all trying to do our best. We all think that we're doing the right thing and it's just having a communi just communicating and having conversations about where we have things in common. Because most of us can find something we have in common with people if you try. And try and forget about all the negative stuff and the things you might not have in common with someone. And, um, Veganism seems to be quite successful and popular at the moment. Um, 20 years ago when I first became vegan, it was a lot different then. And um, now, yeah, it's, I don't, I, I think 
there's a bit of an issue with the um, losing the core ethics of the movement. Um, I think a lot of people care too much about the food and losing weight and stuff like that nowadays. And um, it doesn't. They don't. And, and also buy my ebook or buy my T-shirt or something. It seems, it seems to be all about um, buying things now rather than supporting the local not-for-profits and stuff, which is how it used to be. And um, uh, I think there's always more we can do. So the, there's a lot of people that are really vocal. There's a lot of people who um, say a lot of stuff and are negative online. And just because someone's the loudest, or the most vocal, the rudest, or anything, doesn't mean they're the most right. And it doesn't mean that they know all the answers. So there's a lot of other people that you can learn from as well. And yeah, the most popular things that you see online is food, hashtag vegan, hashtag vegan food. Um, you know, that's really popular at the moment, especially all the Instagram worthy food. We have a lot of bowls, we have like smoothie bowls over here. So they're very, very popular overseas and they're very pretty. Um, but you know, that's not what veganism is all about. It is for some people, definitely, it's, you know, getting photos for the best bowls in the country or whatever. Um, but you know, veganism is a lot of other things as well. And activism, animal rights, what's happening with animals in the law, how can you connect with your local politicians to get some new things happening? How can you find out about other things that other people are doing? And um, you know, veganism is not just for white people who are middle class wanting to lose weight. There's a lot of other vegans out there. And um, find these people and share their stuff, you know. They're really important, they need to be heard as well. And they are heard in certain areas, but not as much as other people. Um, so I'd just like to encourage you to learn more and to do better. And I'd really like for you to think about how you interact with people online and the language that you use. For example, um, when you talk about another culture, what sort of language do you use and is it racist? So think about things like um, Japan and the dolphins. I've seen a lot of people um, use names and slurs whenever they're talking about things that they don't agree with or cultures they don't agree with, how they treat animals. And these are vegan people. A lot of them are vegan people. So think about things like Japan and dolphins, China and dog meat, Middle East and the live trade. There's all these things, and I've, I've, you know, I've seen the way people act online to people all the time, and it's pretty horrible, actually, and we should all be better um, to each other. There's so many different types of vegans, and we should show this more, and we should listen to these people more. Um, and keep an open mind, and always be willing to learn something from other people and other cultures. Focus on the things that connect us, because there's a lot of things like that. And um, just one of my top tips that you know people always ask about being vegan for a long time. My top tip is to lead by example and be consistent. That's it. It's pretty easy. Lead by example, be consistent. And um, I'd love for you to be the best vegan you can be, and I'd love for you to start that now. So um, I hope that you've learned something today, and I hope that if you have, you can tell it to someone else. And um, yeah, you can connect with me on all the social media channels with um, me, Lee Chantel, or VeganVegan.net, and that's like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google Plus, Pinterest, um, Twitter, all, all of that. So have a look at that and my adventures over here. I'm here for um, three months and ten days, and I've just been in London for a few days. I'm staying at a vegan B and B, a friend of a friend. And I've just been staying at Caution with a Australian friend of mine who lives here. And um, then I'm off to, uh, does anyone know Workaway? Has anyone heard of that, the website? So it's a website where you can stay at people's places and you offer your services in exchange for somewhere to stay and for food. So I'm doing that up at the Lakes District next week. Then off to Manchester for that festival. And then off to Bristol, where am I now? Bristol, here. Yeah. So I'm off to Brighton um, for their event. And then I'm off to Belgium for um, to see my cousin for a while. And um, yeah, and then Bournemouth. 
think one month after that, and then I'm off to Spain to meet up with some train travel friends. I'm a bit obsessed with trains, so it's really exciting. And um, so, yeah, I like the glasses that I'm back for it. It looks lovely. Good to have a bit of colour. <laughs> And so yeah, I've got quite a few events coming up and I'll be here until the end of August. So if you've got any way you think I should check out, let me know, follow my travels online. Ooh. Helsinki is fantastic. Helsinki. I promise, it's not always so cold weather. It's not nice. It was like negative four degrees Celsius when I looked the other yeah, day. Yeah, that was like two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I won't write it off then. Good tip. <laughs> when should I go? August? <laughs> When's my June? June. Okay, cool. I won't write off here. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, you can connect with me online and travel and um, follow my travel adventures if you like. And um, yeah, I'll be here giving my next talk at five, so come along to that if you like. I'll be hanging around. Does anyone know where I can get lemon and ginger tea? I'd really like some of that. Did you find any, Jeremy? No. So, um, yeah, if anyone knows where I can find that here, let me know.